Your monthly subscription box from PostFlyBox.com includes all the materials needed to tie a dozen flies along with some extra goodies. The Beadhead Drake Nymph is a fabulous imitation of the naturals. The darker back, segmented body, and remarkably lifelike marabou gills all contribute to making this pattern exceptionally realistic. Start by inserting the point of one of the size 14 hooks into the small hole of one of the black beads, then slide the bead up the shank to behind the hook eye. You can then get the assembly firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. Solder wire is used to add weight and to help stabilize the bead. While holding the bitter end of the wire in the fingertips of your left hand, start taking wraps with your right. Seven or eight is usually plenty. Then, helicopter the wire to break it off close. Leave some space between the bead and the wire and pick up a small amount of super glue type adhesive. Apply it to the hook shank between the bead and the wraps then quickly slide the wraps forward and hold them there while the adhesive sets. It's important to hold firm for at least a couple of seconds. Doing this not only locks the bead into place, but also allows you to tuck in the tail end of the wire without all the wraps simply spinning around the hook shank. Load a bobbin with the spool of olive uni thread. Get the thread started on the hook shank immediately behind the wire, but leave a tag that's six to eight inches long. This will be used later to rib the fly. Continue taking thread wraps, first rearward, then forward over top of the wire wraps, then back again to create a somewhat smooth underbody. Resist the urge to snip the extra long thread tag off. A single olive saddle hackle is used for both the tail and the legs of the fly. Strip away any of the lower webby fibers from both sides of the stem. Pull down a dozen or so stiff, straight fibers perpendicular to the stem, and while holding their tips, strip them free. Pass the clump to your right hand with the tip still aligned, then measure to form a tail a hook shank in length. Transfer that measurement rearward to the start of the hook bend and use a pinch wrap to anchor the fibers to the top of the shank. Make sure they're anchored all the way back to the start of the bend, then work your thread forward to the wire wraps. You can then lift the butt ends of the fibers up and snip them off close. The back and wing case of the fly are made of black zelon. Snip free a two inch length, then separate it first into two equal pieces, then separate one of those into another two pieces. In other words, you don't need much material at all. Snip one end of the zelon off square, then take a few thread wraps forward and place the snipped off end at the back edge of the bead. Use nice firm thread wraps to anchor it there, then begin wrapping rearward all the way to the base of the tail. Next, take thread wraps forward until your thread hangs at about the hook point. A dozen or so fibers from a single marabou feather are used to create the body of the fly. Strip them free from the stem, like so, and then flip them around so you're holding the tips in the fingers of your left hand. Snip these brittle wispy tips off square, then place the marabou on top of the hook shank and take thread wraps to secure it. Again, go all the way back to the base of the tail. Next, take wraps with your tying thread up the hook shank to behind the bead. Give the marabou a little twist and get hold of the fibers with hackle pliers. Continue twisting the fibers so they form a tight little rope. Then. Start taking touching wraps with that rope up the hook shank to build a slightly tapered, fuzzy body on the fly. Secure the rope at the back edge of the bead with nice firm wraps of tying thread. You can then snip the excess material off close. Get hold of the black zelon and pull it forward over the back of the fly and take a few thread wraps to lock it down. Now, get hold of that tag end of thread and start making open spiral wraps with it to rib and segment the body of the fly. When you reach your tying thread, use it to secure the rib, then snip the excess off close. Pull a small amount of olive dubbing free from the packet and use it to create a thin two inch long dubbing noodle on your tying thread. Pull the Z-line back and start taking wraps with the noodle behind the bead. These wraps will force the Z-line back. 
keep taking wraps with the noodle to build up the thorax of the fly. It should be about the same length as the bead. Leave your tying thread at the back edge of the bead. Pick up that same saddle hackle feather you use for the tail and once again pull down a dozen or so fibers perpendicular to the stem and while keeping their tips aligned, strip them free. Place the fibers diagonally across the back of the fly behind the bead and take a couple wraps of tying thread to secure them. You want them to be about half a hook shank in length. Go back to the feather once again and strip another dozen fibers free and repeat the same tie-in procedure on the opposite angle. Pull the zeolon forward out over the bead and take two or three thread wraps to secure it there. Then lift up all the extra material that's pointing forward and snip it off as close as you can to the thread wraps. It's okay if a little bit sticks out onto the bead. Do a four or five turn whip finish, seat the knot well, and snip your tying thread free. A drop of head cement applied to the thread wraps will help to increase the fly's durability. It's the darker back and lifelike gills sticking out on the sides that really make this pattern look like a real drake nymph. <music>